Hi guys, my name's Lauren and I'm one of the law teachers at Newcastle Sixth Form College. In this video, I will be finishing off explaining actus reus to you and focusing on what omissions are. So just as a quick recap, in part one, actus reus video, I explained to you that there are two elements that the prosecution must prove in every single crime, okay, before the defendant will be found guilty on beyond all reasonable doubt. These two elements are actus reus, which translates to, yes, I hope you all said the guilty act, and mens rea, which translates to, yes, the guilty mind. So in video part one, I was explaining to you the different types of acts that can be committed by the defendant in crimes. So we've got um, state of affairs crimes, which you can be guilty of by just being somewhere or something. And we looked at the case example of Larsena, where the defendant was guilty of being an illegal immigrant. She never actually committed any crime. It wasn't her actions that the court were looking at. It was just her being somewhere in a country. Then we've got conduct crimes, where there needs to be no consequence. There doesn't need to be an accident, property damage or injury. Just doing something is enough. For example, speeding. And then we have consequence crimes where there does have to be a consequence. So property damage and injury. Um, and the most common examples of these are non-fatal offence, non-fatal offences, such as the injury will be actual bodily harm or grievous bodily harm, and the defendant will be guilty through the consequence of their actions. Now those are all acts okay voluntary acts so being somewhere okay doing something doing some consequence that's an action okay but what about if the defendant commits a crime by failing to act is that possible so could they be guilty by not doing something so let me give you this example what about if the defendants were two parents that had negligently looked after their child. They hadn't fed their child, they hadn't looked after it, and their child died of malnutrition. Then what would happen? They haven't physically caused the death through an action. They haven't beaten the child to death, okay? It's not through their injuries from physical violence, but their lack of doing, their failing to feed the child, has still resulted in the death. Well, they would be guilty of the crime through doing that, okay? And this could either be gross negligence, manslaughter, or murder, depending on how severe it is. If they're deliberately failing to feed the child, okay, and they're being severely negligent, then that can be a murder charge. Whereas if the parents, say, perhaps had learning difficulties and they were trying to look after the child, but they just weren't feeding it enough, Okay, maybe that will be a gross negligence manslaughter charge. Either way, that failure to do something can be sufficient for the actus reus. And when a failure to act is sufficient for the actus reus, that's something called an omission. And that's all an omission means. It's failing to do something. So instead of positively doing something, it's like the negative. You're not doing something that you should be doing. Okay. But who decides who has to do what? Okay. In the UK, there are six different types of omissions, okay, which are set out. And if you fail to perform in any of these six categories when the law has put an onus on you, then you can be guilty by an omission. Now, what about this situation? I want you to think about the example that I'm going to give you in the little scenario. And I want you to just think in your head whether the defendant could be guilty of any criminal conviction by failing to act. Okay, now you can pause this video after I explain if you wish, or just think about it and have that answer in your head. So let's say that you are walk on a nice walk, okay, on a nice summer's day, and you're walking through a park and past the lake. And you see that there's a man drowning. Okay, now he's shouting out at you, help, 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 please call someone. You've got your mobile phone fully charged in your pocket, service, internet, everything up there. Okay. There's a massive log as well, which you could also throw in the lake to try and help the man get up above the surface. 
instead of doing either of those things, you just decide to walk on. Okay. I'm hungry, I want your dinner. Okay. You just walk past the man, never think of him again, and unfortunately he drowns and dies. Okay. Could any criminal convictions be brought against you for failing to act in that situation? Well, you might be surprised to know that no, they can't. Okay. If that thing happened, okay, there is no criminal conviction that can be brought against you. Okay. And that's because in the UK, we don't have a duty to just help people who are in danger. Okay. If you haven't created that dangerous situation yourself, so you haven't physically pushed that person in the lake, then you don't have a duty to act. If you did push that person in the lake and you've created that dangerous situation, that can actually be a type of omission. But let's just say you didn't. It's more of a rescue situation. Then you don't have a duty to act. And that's because we don't have anything in law to protect people. Now, in France and other European countries, they have something called the Good Samaritan Law. And therefore, if that scenario played out in France, you would be guilty okay, of failing to act under that law. However, we don't have that in the UK. So the only time when you would be guilty via omission, okay, so the actors first will be satisfied for failing to act, is if it falls into one of the six categories that I'm going to talk about now. Okay. So I'm going to start off with the example that I give you earlier about the negligent parents. Okay, so that is a type of omission. What type of omission is that? Well, that duty is put on parents through something called special relationships. Okay, so if there is a special relationship, such as parent and child, husband and wife, okay, then in that situation, the defendant, okay, must make sure that the other person is well looked after, okay, and fed. And if they don't, they can be guilty of manslaughter or murder. And the case example to go with that omission is R.V. Gibbons and Proctor from 1918. And it's really similar to the example that I give you, okay. You had a father and his new partner who deliberately starved, okay, his young daughter, locked her away, were horrible to her and failed to feed her. Now, she died of malnutrition, okay. Both the father and the stepmother were convicted of murder, all right. And the actress race that was proven by the prosecution was via emission, failure to act, failure to feed, okay? And they'd intended to kill her as well, so they had the men's rear there. Now, another example, okay, could be similar to the situation that I was talking about earlier. If you pushed someone into a lake and you've created a dangerous situation, do you have a duty to act then? Well, yes, you've created a dangerous situation. The second type of omission is a dangerous situation created by the defendant. And the case example that we have for that omission is R.V. Miller, and that's 1983. Now, in this case, you had uh, the defendant who was a homeless man, and he was basically roughing it in this house. Now, he'd lit up a cigarette, okay, was finished with a cigarette, flung it on the floor, and it set fire to the mattress that he was sleeping on. Now, instead of trying to put the fire out, ring the fire brigade, like I would hope any other person would do, he just thought, ah, leave it. Went into another bedroom and just went back to sleep. Now, this led to a huge fire and loads of damage, okay? And he was convicted of arson. And again, the actor's race was proven by his failure to act when he'd created the dangerous situation by creating the fire, okay? He had a duty to do something to stop that, and he never, okay? Now, the third type of omission that I'm going to talk to you about is similar to relationships again, okay? But it's not a special relationship in this one. It's a duty um, voluntarily undertaken, okay, by someone. So, let's say that um, I had a really sick aunt, okay, and I said, she can move in with me, don't worry, um, she can't really walk, so I'm going to have to make sure that she gets in and out of bed, up and down the stairs in my house, um, she also can't cook for herself, and she's really forgetful, so she might forget whether she's eaten or not, so 
So I need to be making sure that I make her meals. I need to be making sure that she eats her meals. I need to make sure that um, she takes her medication. She also forgets to do that. And essentially what I'm doing is taking on the role of a carer. So this duty that's undertaken voluntarily is somebody basically offering to be a carer for someone. Now, by doing that, okay, I've put myself in a tricky situation if I don't follow through with what I've said. Okay, so let's say actually when my aunt's moved in, I'm really busy. Okay, I don't realize that I don't have the time to do this. Okay, I'm at work until half four by the time I drive back. It's half five, then I want to go to the gym, and then by the time I get home, it's eight o'clock. And I've been left that house since seven o'clock in the morning. So my aunt hasn't eaten any meals since breakfast, hasn't taken a medication in the afternoon. And let's say, um, as a result of my negligence, she dies, okay, of malnutrition. Then I will be guilty through an omission, and I'll be convicted, okay, of gross negligence manslaughter. Because I said I'll make sure she's okay. And I haven't. All right. So be careful um, if you try and be nice and move people in your house. And the case example that we'll have to go with that is RV Stone and Dobinson 1977. Now, this is a bit of a weird case um, because the defendant himself, okay, um, Dobinson, actually had learning difficulties as well. So it wasn't a good situation set up from the start. So Dobinson's elderly sister, Fanny, Okay, she was really elderly, she needed looking after, and she also had anorexia. Now, Dobbertson volunteered to move his sister in and essentially be her carer, so, you know, she can come and stop in my spare room and I'll make sure she's okay, type of thing. And Dobbertson also had his mistress living in the house as well. Okay, Stone. And the elderly sister lived there and... They were trying to make her meals and trying to look after her, but she basically locked herself away in this spare room, okay, and she didn't want to eat. Now, Stone and Dobinson didn't ask for any help, okay, so they knew that the elderly sister was up there, hadn't been eaten, okay, and had been basically bedridden, and they hadn't asked for help. The neighbours also were realising something quite, um, something wasn't quite right, and they were sort of raising alarms with Dobinson and they still didn't ask for help okay now this resulted in the elderly sister actually starving to death so again dying by malnutrition and when she was taken away she had bed sores all over her as well okay so she literally just kept herself in bed now this case does receive a little bit of criticism because while Dobinson had volunteered to look after his elderly sister he actually had learning difficulties himself Okay, he was also blind and deaf. So he's taken on a big role here when he, he can't look after himself anyway. He's got his mistress there who was sort of caring for him as well. So he did still receive a small prison sentence. Okay, it's the courts have taken this very seriously and the mistress also received a prison sentence. Okay, while, you know, they might have been out with their depth, what they should have done in that situation was asked for help. And the fact that they didn't is the key thing there. Okay, so you've also got a duty undertaken voluntarily. Okay, other examples could be um, you have a duty to do certain things in your contract of employment. Okay, so let's say for an example, um, a lollipop man or woman. Okay, they have a duty to make sure that children get across the road safely. Okay, and if you had an example where the lollipop man decided, oh, I want to get off early today. It's not very nice. It's raining. I want to get home. And he missed all the children coming out of school. Went home and one of the children got knocked down and killed. He could be guilty of gross negligence manslaughter. And that's because it's his duty under his contract to make sure the children get across the road safely. And he's failed to do that. Okay. The case example that we use in law is R.V. Pitwood, which is 1902. And in this case, you had a railway keeper and he failed to shut a level crossing, okay, against the train track. Now, a man came along on a horse and cart and rode right across the train track because the gate was open. So he obviously thought, okay, it's safe. And he was knocked down and killed by the train. 
and the railway keeper was guilty of um, gross negligence manslaughter because he's failed to act in that situation. And that is still how train line train tracks work today. If you've ever drove past one, you know, the gate comes down and closes when a train is approaching and it's got the red light. It'll then show the green light and lift and that means it's safe to cross the crossing, okay? And it's somebody's job to be in charge of that. And obviously, if failing to do something in your job has a really serious consequence, then you deserve to be guilty of manslaughter. If that is what you need to do, keep people safe and you don't, then the onus is going to be on you. Now, there also could be a duty through somebody's job, but it might not just be in their contract. It's a duty because they're in public office. So, for an example, it could be a police officer. Okay. And the case example that we've got is R.V. Dyfman from 1979. And in this case, a police officer basically failed to intervene when a man had came out of a nightclub drunk, was attacked and killed. Okay. Now, it was close to the police officer checking off and going home, okay, nearly the end of his shift. So after a long night shift, he thought, oh, God, there's two people out of this, out this club fighting. I can't be bothered. I want to go home. I'm tired. I'm hungry. And he's failed to intervene. And unfortunately for him and also the victim, that has resulted in the victim being killed okay, by his injuries. And therefore, the police officer was guilty of gross negligence manslaughter and he was convicted of willfully and without reasonable excuse negligently performing his duty okay that is one of the main role or main roles of a police officer to make sure the public is safe and he's failed to do that okay so those are five types and we've got one type left which is a statutory duty so a statute is another word for a law. So all these pieces of legislation that are created by Parliament are also called statutes. And if it is written in a law that you must do something and you fail to do that thing, then you can also be guilty via an omission. So a really common example is failure to provide specimen. Okay, so it could be a specimen of breath if you are pulled over by the police and they want to check that you're not intoxicated or you're not high on drugs, they might ask you to be breathalyzed, okay, and breathe in the machine. Now, if you fail to provide a specimen of your breath, okay, then you can be guilty via an omission, and that will be under Section 6 of the Road Traffic Act 1988, okay? It could also be a failure to provide um, blood or any other thing that the police asks you to provide, okay? So those are the six types of omissions and you've got five case examples to go with those types and then with statutory duty you've just got the example okay of failing to provide a specimen of breath under section six of the Road Traffic Act 1988 as there are no case examples to go with that one. I hope that's been clear okay and you now understand the different types of omissions if you do have any questions, then please just ask. Remember as well that the act or the omission, okay, caused by the defendant must also cause the injury, death, property damage, whatever it is in question. Because if it does not, then the actus reus cannot be satisfied. And this is something called causation, which Kelly is going to do a follow-up video for you on. Thanks for listening.